by way of introduction, um, most, many of you here will be familiar with the Sweeney Vesti 7x7 series. Yes? No. Oh, no? Yeah. Well, okay. It's, it's, it's a bit like this. In other words, you've got, in that case, seven minutes, you're against the clock, you speak, you say your bit, and we move on to the next one. So that's the format tonight. You've got five minutes. Tom's going to keep the eye on the clock really hard. You've got, and you'll get cut off. <laughs> so focus your message. Think of it as distilled water. We will then have a panel at the end, and what I'd like you to do is think about the contextual things that are coming through rather than get into asking individual speakers about questions. See if you can stretch them off the back of what they've said, okay? Rather than, well, asking a question here and there. Perhaps that's just me. By way of, by way of introduction to, to the topic, which I must congratulate, I don't know who dreamed this up. You did it as a team, did you? Was it a team? Team, team a team? Yeah. But, but it's really good. It's really good because um, there's a conversation going on uh, around the planet in various places now, uh, which is essentially saying, uh, as the title to one of the Davos papers, and if you're not a reader of the World Economic Forum annual background papers each January, I really suggest you do. I mean, this is, this is a, an ecologist saying, I found economic papers riveting. Well, I've actually been reading them now for five or six years, and, and there's some fascinating stuff coming through. But this January, there was a turning point. And one of the papers was headed, Why We Should Not Waste a Good Financial Crisis. The bubble is close to bursting. And the bubble they were talking about was not a financial bubble, it was the whole model of the way society and economies relate to their resources. And, and that was really, really an, a, a way forward. And so uh, they were talking about all the resource uh, base being chronically underpriced. So they were saying we've had 50 years of extraordinary expansion and we've got more wealth and more well-being across the whole of the planet than we've ever had in human history. But we've done that We've mined our capital at a faster rate, our natural capital, than ever in history. And so they went on and they talked about 2008, 2008 as the year of the canaries. Fuel, food and finance. Lovely sound bite. The year of canaries. And, and as part of that, they highlighted, and I'm just going to finish by reading the real nub of what was coming out of a number of these papers, and what they were saying is while attention is focused on restructuring the rules that govern financial capital flows, a great opportunity exists to hardwire into the new system the importance of natural capital flows and their fundamental contribution as a driver to the broader economy and, de and development. Importantly, it is not a fringe discussion anymore about using soft power to promote a feeling of environmental well-being in how we should run our lives. The systemic risks we face and the urgency of the challenge require application in the real economy to change how we do things and how we price things in the global economy. Sustainability is no longer a nice to have, it has become a human security and survival issue and we must envision ways for humanity to thrive, not just survive. And I reckon that was a stunning piece of tying it all together. And I think we should be all saying here in New Zealand, have we got that sort of thinking going on in our response to the financial global crisis? I think not.